welcome to Camp Peculiar. My name is Aaron and this is a channel dedicated to visual storytelling using AI art. And today we're continuing our series on using the Unity game engine for short film, animation, motion comics, or cut scene production, all leveraged by AI art. This is video two in the Unity playlist. In the first video, we downloaded, set up Unity, created a project, and then looked at the entire process start to finish. This video takes a more in-depth look at 2D set building inside of Unity, and the concepts that I'll present can be used to build small little motion comic panels or entire 2.5D sets capable of supporting a short film or larger film project. Step one, we're gonna need some art for our set. Okay, now the major difference when generating art for a 2.5D set, that's 2D assets or 2D images in a 3D environment, is that the art shouldn't have perspective to it. It shouldn't have any angles creating depth in the image. We're gonna be using the 3D environment that we're in inside of Unity to create angles, depth, and perspective. And so we don't need them in the image. And unfortunately, Midjourney 4 just loves to do angles. And this can be problematic because when you're using an image that has perspective in it and you put it into an environment that also has perspective, a little bit of distortion can occur. So we're looking for the dead on side profile or front profile of images and characters. I use a lot of image prompts during this process, trying to hint to mid-journey the angle that I'm looking for, which is no angle. Sometimes I do a Google image search first to see what type of images mid-journey is likely to give me for a particular phrase, and then I change my phrases in Google until I see what I'm looking for, and then I use those words in mid-journey to get back the artwork I want. I've had limited consistent success with angle words like no perspective, side profile, front profile, and I've tried a lot of them. I'm sure you are way better at prompting than me. The main takeaway here is just try to get all of your image assets in a dead on side profile or front profile with as little perspective as you can. If you're having trouble getting that done, you can always adjust the perspective in Photoshop using edit transform perspective or edit transform skew to make things more flat and even. I also like to mix and match mid-journey images and build my own wall. So I'll take a brick texture from one image, a window or a ledge or a door from some other image, bring them all together in Photoshop and make more of a generic wall that I can use to build buildings or rooms. Okay, so now I have a ton of artwork for my urban city scene here. Most of it is a PNG with transparency, which is key. So before I bring all these 2D images into Unity, I'm gonna bring in one 3D piece. This is totally 100% optional. It's just a sidewalk. Sidewalks can totally be made using the 2.5D method that we're about to do. I just don't think it's any fun to make a sidewalk that way. And I wanted to do sort of a quick demo of Blender. And of course you could use Blender for this whole process and just UV map and texture AI art onto actual 3D models. It's fun, it works great, but it's way slower than using just images to build sets in Unity. So in Blender, really quickly, I just used the default cube, scaled it so it was sort of the shape of a sidewalk. I then UV unwrapped it using the smart UV unwrap, then realized that's sort of pointless when a cube. Then I created a new base color material for this cube. I laid out the UVs by hand because it was really only just the two sides that I was interested in, the top and then the like curb side part of it. I used the texture paint mode in Blender to draw words on top of the object just so I could see where things are and which side was up. Normally you would use a UV grid or a checkered pattern to do this, but but I didn't do that here. Then I just used parts of the AI images that I generated for the sort of urban city scene and put together this ridiculously in bad shape sidewalk. The reason you'd use this method is that if you want to or need to have a true 3D shape in your scene for some reason, but you want those 3D shapes to match the art style of the 2D images that you generated from Midjourney. In this way, you're using 2D art texture mapped on top of a 3D image. But again, this is way slower and a little more involved and just using 2D images in a 3D space works great. So I just saved the base color image that I made in Photoshop and then I exported the model from Blender as an FBX. And again, that's the only 3D object I'm gonna import and it was totally optional. All right, so now let's go into Unity and start building our set. So the first thing that I did was import the FBX model that I exported from Blender. Then I unpacked the material in Unity, which is just a single button click. I unpacked the material from that. And then I imported that base color image that I made using the AI art in Photoshop. The next thing I wanna do is drag the image, the image that has the sort of AI artwork on it, onto the albedo or albedo slot for the material that was unpacked from the FBX model. The albedo or albedo slot is sort of like the color slot. 
And when I drag that image over the top of that area of the material, Unity applies that as sort of a color map or a color image for that particular object. So our sidewalk's done. I know it's dark, it'll be fine in just a minute. Next thing I'm gonna do is create a ground plane or a street so I can have a sense of where things should be vertically positioned. So that's just using Unity's built-in plane object. I set its position to zero, 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 and then I create a new generic material for it just so I can give it a color and I try to make it sort of like an asphalt color thing. Next, it's time to build the main building where our motion comic is gonna be happening. So I imported all the sprites into Unity. Those are just images, and then I put them inside their own folder inside of Unity. Incidentally, this actually creates a folder on your system inside your Unity project, inside the assets folder, uh, you would actually find this folder. The next thing I did was create another just standard Unity plane object. I then sort of rotated it around so it was more upright, and then I dragged the front side of the building image, just an image I brought into Unity, dragged that into the scene over the top of that plane and let go with the mouse, and then Unity did something really important to understand. First, when I let go of that image on top of that thing, it created a folder inside of my sprites folder called materials. Remember that a sprite is kind of just like an image and a material is a collection of settings determining how something looks in 3D space and some of those settings can be defined by using images. So when I drag that image on top of the plane, Unity created a folder called materials. Inside of that folder, it created a new material for the plane and it applied the image that I dragged as that new materials albedo color image sort of slot. So that thing that I did manually, to the FBX sidewalk model that I imported where I dragged the image for the color into the albedo color slot myself. Unity did that for us automatically when we just drag an image on top of a plane in the scene view. And while it's nice that that was done all automatically, there are a few settings you need to adjust. Only one of them is mandatory, and that is that you need to select the material that was just created for you automatically inside of the material folder, select that new material, and change its rendering mode from opaque to cut out. That's really the only change that's required, but I make a bunch of other adjustments to the material, like I turn the smoothing down to zero and then I turn off the specular and the reflective options because I don't want this to look like a piece of paper that's getting a specular highlight. I want it to just look like a 2D image. Also for each image that you import, each sprite that you import, not the materials, but the actual images that are above the materials folder, I typically set the filter mode to point and the compression to none. This is 100% optional. It just sharpens up your images a little bit. So after all that, we have one wall done. The rest of them are gonna be very easy and go very quickly. I also just wanted to make note really quickly that over on the left in the hierarchy view of our scene where all the objects that are in the scene are listed, I do try to rename those and name them something that makes sense and then sort of drag and group them together so all like things are near each other in that scene hierarchy. From there, I'm gonna create the side of the building. So I just duplicate that building plane and rotate it, move it into position. Also duplicate the sidewalk, rotate that, and move that into position, and I have the corner of a building. I'm gonna bring in this magazine stand here just to add some props to the seam. Same exact method, create a plane, drag the sprite on top of that plane, select the new material that was just created, change it from opaque to cut out, and then adjust whatever other settings you wanna to do to sharpen it up. Then I go ahead and rotate that magazine stand, scale it down so it's at the right scale, and put it into position. So everything in a 2.5 DC is made using that method. I'll just add some more buildings here. And it's time to add a directional light to the scene, which you can just right click anywhere and add a directional light and then turn on the shadows from none to hard for that directional light. Remember directional lights sort of affect everything in the scene that's not being blocked by some other piece of geometry. It's kind of like a mini sun. It doesn't really matter where they are, but it really matters how they are rotated. So you can make multiple directional lights or just change the settings on one directional light. And with your same scene, you can get sort of a morning, afternoon, night, evening type of look. You could also do a time lapse from night to day by simply animating the properties of the directional light. So time to add some more props, this time trees using same method, just duplicate some planes, rotate them, drag a new image on top of them, then adjust the material. And then on the main building, I cut out the window here so I could build a room behind it. And this is where one of the characters is gonna be for the first shot of the scene. They're gonna be inside of this room. I didn't create a floor for this room, but I did create a ceiling so that I could block out the light from that directional light. And then I put a point light inside of the room, turned its range down, but turned its intensity up so that I could control the color and light in that room independently. 
when adding lights to your scene, you have kind of three options. You can add another directional light, which again is kind of like a mini sun, if you will. You could add a point light, which is kind of like a spotlight that's shooting in all directions. Or you could add a spotlight, which is like a spotlight shooting in one direction. Just stay away from the area lights at this point in time. They require just a little bit more setup to get working. Next, I started finally just sort of moving around the main camera, which is the camera that we're actually going to create movie clips from in the next video, just to see how things were looking. Last, I added a taxi cab to the scene and one of the characters, and then I put that character inside of the room and adjusted the light for the first shot. So this whole process took me about an hour, not including the AI art generation part. I think if I weren't recording this for a video, I could have done it in probably 30 or 45 minutes. And for that effort, I think it's neat that you get a set that you can shoot from different locations, different times of day. You can be down on the street and have that be a part of the story, move up to a window. It just gives you a lot of different opportunities for shots and for storytelling. And we haven't even added particle effects for like steam vents yet or added global fog or any kind of background or anything like that. In the next video, we're covering cameras, which will be a lot of fun because we'll get to set up dolly tracks and make big movements with our cameras. And we're going to set up the recorder option so we can actually start getting movie clips out of here. If you like this sort of thing, you found that educational, entertaining, exciting, or maybe even enlightening, do me a favor and subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. It really helps out the channel. And I will see you next time at Camp Peculiar.